Hi everyone, welcome back to the card making series for beginners. Um, last week we spoke about um, layering cards and adding sentimental areas, um, stamping on stamping layers, DSP, adding embellishments etc. So we've touched on that already in week one. Um, now this week we're looking at um, some basic techniques equipment and terminology. Now, I want to explain to you, first of all, um, simple stamping. Now, simple stamping is really, really easy. And this is aimed mainly at new, new crafters. So simple stamping is as simple as stamping a sentiment and an image on a piece of card and that is pretty much your first stage simple stamping. You can then step it up by, um, like we discussed last week, adding a layer. I don't know if you could see that on there. Adding a layer. Um, you could also colour your stamped image and add embellishments. Okay. So that's the two kind of simple stamping things. Now, what I also want to talk to you about is two and three stage stamping or some people refer to it as second generation and third generation um, and what that means is um, the two stage stamping is where you would stamp the image and then stamp again on top to colour. Now I'm going to show you quickly what I mean. So if I take my above the clouds bundle for instance, okay so we have um, two step one stamps here and then we'll have the second stage stamp there which will fill in the colour. So I'll just quickly show you how I would do that. Now that's it stuck to my wall. I'm used, just using some scrap um, cardstock to show you, okay? Um, so let's see, I'm just prepping my cleaning tools here. So. Let me use, what colour shall I use? Let me use um, two different colours, but you can use the one colour. So what I'm going to do is I've got Pacific Point here, which is a darker, and I would recommend for the outline that you do use a darker ink. Okay, so let's just um, stamp that on there. So there's our first image. Okay, if I just clean that off as I go. We then have the inside section, which will colour the image. So, if I pick that up, come on, don't be shy. And we load it up with ink. We add it on the top of the image and that is your two-stage stamping. Now, some sets have three set three um, parts that you can do. Um, this one is just the two, and there is other elements to add on around it. But this is stamping on another image kind of thing. Now, when they talk about second generation, this is our normal stamp. Okay, second generation would be just to put it down again to get a lighter effect, and third again would be like so. Now if I use a more solid um, image to show you. Right, let me see what do I have here. So, let me grab this outline again and I'll do it in the darker. So there's your first image, second generation and third. And you will see from the one colour, the Pacific Point, you're getting three different shades there. So that's what we mean by two, three stage stamping and um, second and third generation stamping. So, um, what else is there? We also have um, where you can do reverse stamping, okay? And I'll show you an example of that. I'll just quickly get my another card uh, stamp set out to show you because I want to be able to show you properly. Now, um, let me see. 
Let me get this away first. All right, one that I like to do is the... Doo -doo -doo, what is it called? It's called Beautiful You. So let me find the right image to show you because I don't know where it is in my pile. Um, in fact, let me use Happy Tails as an example. The lovely little dog. So what you need is uh, either one of these um, silicon craft sheets. I will link all the um, products underneath if you want to have a further look. So basically what we do with this is we get a, an image and it's an image that you want to reverse. Okay, so if I put this little guy here, now I'm sticking with the blue. Okay, just to show you. I get another piece of um, scrap paper. So you'll see how it stamps the little dog facing left. Now, what we could do is um, we simply stamp on our craft sheet. Okay, see that there? We would then gently place cardstock on it and lift to lift up that image. And that is how you get reverse stamping. Really easy. Really easy. Now, um, what I need to do is quickly clean this. And the silicone craft sheet's brilliant because um, you can lift all your ink, etc. off it and it's not going to damage it. So there, that's that cleaned. So that is mirror imaging. And that's quite good if you want a left, a right facing dog instead of a left facing dog. Um, there's lots of stamp sets out there that um, you can do that with. And the beautiful you with the little lady that dances is a really good one for that. So that is our um, reverse stamping. Okay, so I'll pop that away just now. Put those to the side. Now the next bit um, is about stamping your own DSP. And what is this is also called is um, One Sheet Wonder. Um, one Sheet Wonder can also reference taking one piece of DSP, you know, your designer series paper, um, such as a big 12 by 12 sheet, cutting it all up to get so many cards out of it. So that is another, it depends what area you're from, what means what. But One Sheet Wonder, um, you would get a piece of A4 cardstock, stamp all over it, cut it up to make little cards, and then, um, yeah, that is um, One Sheet Wonder. Now, I'm going to quickly show you what I mean. Now, I have a sample card in my pack, so let me see. So, what I've done is I have stamped my own background. Okay, now i done that directly on the card, but if you had an A4 sheet, you could do it all over, cut it in four, and there's four card backgrounds for you. So that's what we mean um, by One Sheet Wonder or Stamp Your Own DSP. It's a good um, technique if you don't have a lot of actual designer series papers that are already pre-printed. Um, so that's another idea. Um, I did have, um, I was wanting to talk about watercolouring as well, um, but I cannot locate my, what do you want to call it? I can't find my watercolour pencils. But basically watercolouring is, for instance, you, um, where's my little brush? You would get your aqua pen. Um, let me show you actually. So if I put, I'm just going to put some ink on my block like so. Okay, I'm just going to add some water on there. And basically, I should have checked that was clean, sorry. Basically, you're just going to lift the ink and the water off and colour your image like so. Really easy. Um, you can just do with this with your ink pads, but when you're using the pencils, you're colouring an image and then you're applying the water. 
to the bits that you've coloured in to spread it out and it's a really really good effect um, I'm just a bit disappointed that I cannot find my watercolouring pencil so I do apologise but as I said last week the World Wide Web is full of inspiration full of card making um, techniques specific to a certain technique so um, so yeah I'm going to have a wee look at that Right, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another little technique quickly, which is alcohol blending with the um, stamping blends. Okay, so with stamping up alcohol um, markers, we are lucky because we get a dark and a light shade, and this is really, really good. Now, what I want to do is I need to find a little image to stamp. Okay, and I think I'll use these gorgeous little elephants from the Wildly Happy set. Okay, now um, you can stamp in black if you like, but I like to stamp in the coordinating colour that I'm, I'm colouring with. Okay, so let me show you. So I'll pop that there, and there is a whole host of um, tutorials on my channels to do with um, where I, I use the blend pens and I'll show you how I do it. Some people start with the darker shade first um, and then the light, but I like to do the light then the dark and sometimes I need to go over it again with the, the light to break it up. But you've just got to go with what's best for yourself. Now, this is going to be their solid colour, the light. Then I'm going to add some shading with the darker one. And these products make you look like you are a fantastic colouring in expert. So I just want to add some shade. And you can see naturally where the shading is going to be because stamping up are, are, are good uh, when they're designing their stamps. Um, so that's how I go as a guide anyway. Okay, so I've added my dark and obviously that's jumping out a bit much. Okay, so if I show you, you can see that. But if I go over again with the light, like so, It blends it in even better. And you get that kind of water water look effect as well, I think. Absolutely love it. So that is just the basics to alcohol blending markers. And ours are called stamping blends. Now they have a brush tip and they also have your standard nib, which is quite good for you know going round edges or what have you. Or if you want to add more detail to your um, image, you know, like the little crease lines, etc. So that is blending with stamping blends. Um, the next technique I want to tell you about is embossing. Now, you have dry embossing and you also have heat embossing. Okay, so dry embossing is when you use a, an embossing folder. And I'll show you what that is now, for those of you that don't know. Because like I say, this is for beginners. Okay. Now, if I find an embossing folder, I could show you. This is an embossing folder. And I'll leave a link to all the different types that we have. Okay. So it's a plastic folder. Um, there's certain sizes and you can put your cardstock in there and run it through your die cutting machine to get a particular embossed texture on your card. So, um, what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to quickly run this through to let you see. So I have my die cutting machine. Um, if you're really getting into crafting, I would recommend this for sure. Most definitely. Um, because you can emboss on it, you can die cut. That's where you use dies and um, cut images out. Um, so yeah, so I have a magnetic platform 
and two plates and this is called a sandwich so when I'm doing normal die cutting I just um, put the paper on top of the first plate I put the die on the top of that and then sandwich it in run it through and that cuts that perfectly but for the embossing folder because this one is um, one of the thicker styles I have a different plate and you will see it's got various um, variances of plate width and thickness. So if I pop that in like so and run it through, run it back, really easy. And this is called dry embossing. Okay, so let me get this away out of the way then now because I don't want to use it again. And it is handy if you keep your die cutting machine close by. Okay, let me shift that then out. So, you will see the effect, and this is dry embossing. Gorgeous. You could use the front, or you could use the reverse image. Depends what effect you're looking for. So that is really, really, really good. Now, wet embossing. I haven't embossed in a little while, so I'm going to quickly show you how you can wet emboss. Now, there's various ways to do it. I'll just put this stuff away. So, wet embossing, you are going to need embossing powder. Now, this is white emboss powder. So, I'm, I've, just, I've not used this yet, so I'm going to use this for an example today. So, I need a piece of black card just so that you can see better the effect, okay? Now I need to get another bit of equipment out which is called a heat gun. Okay, so the heat gun is a must if you are doing embossing, weight embossing. So let me get this hooked up and plugged in. Now a tip is, um, when you are ready to emboss, warm up your heat gun first. It's just it just makes life so much easier. Right, so you need cardstock. Um you also need hang on, I'm trying to find my other bits. You will need um an embossing ink pad. And this is basically just clear, but it's sticky, and the embossing powder sticks to it. Um, I have a clear powder here as well that I like. You will also need an emboss buddy. Now, this is... Um, it's kind of... I, I don't want to say it's talcum powder inside it. It's something like that. Basically, you would use this to take any static off of your cardstock. Now, you need to do that because... These are that fine a powder that um, it will go absolutely everywhere. And if you emboss buddy it first, um, it, the, it's just going to stink, stick to your ink, you know, your embossing glue. So let me find, um, let me find an image. Now, I think I'll use this large rose um, stamp. It's one of my favourites. I've never actually embossed with it so you want to make sure you're putting plenty of glue on there okay now before I stamp it I want to get a piece of scrap paper and I'm going to pop that underneath because I want to catch any excess powder I don't want to waste anything okay now I've got lots of embossing ink on there push down like so okay and you may just see it like so. What you do is you get your embossing powder. There's lots and lots and lots of um, different colours in the catalogue and what have you. So I simply pour it over. Now some people will use a little tub. Isn't that beautiful? They will use a little tub and then scoop it back in. But I keep forgetting. So for today, you're seeing me doing it the old school way which is just to tip it back into the tub from that scrap piece of paper. Right, 
Make sure your powder is closed and away out the road. You don't want to blow it everywhere. And I'm going to heat up my gun. So I'm just going to give it a little five minutes or so. Not five minutes, ten seconds. <laughs> oh, I would be here all day. While well, I'm doing that, I'm just putting away my glue and stuff. Now that feels pretty hot. Now, you can do it from the front of the card or from the reverse. But if you watch, you will see how the ink changes. And it gets, um, I don't know if you can see that, it gets a lot more prudent on the page. It's basically melting it onto your card. You can do it from reverse as well, that works too. And you don't want to do it too long, you just need to watch and you'll see how fabulous that is. Now, if you were then going to colour this in, it would need to be white cardstock, obviously. Um, by embossing it, wait, embossing it and then drying it like this, um, when you're colouring, it won't seep out the sides. Um, so this is a really good method to use if you like, if you want to get, get into your kind of water colouring and stuff. So that is basically wet embossing. So, that's some of the basic techniques. Um, I will see though, I need to quickly wash that. I'll wash that later, I need to give it a good scrub. Um, I will see though that when it comes to stamping, there's, there's two types of stamps. We've got the photopolymer ones, which are great for lining up um, and precision stamping. And we also have the red rubber cling. Um, the red rubber is my favourite because it doesn't stain... Um, that one looks stained because I've not cleaned it properly. It doesn't stain, it'll absolutely last forever and ever. Um, the photopolymer ones are great for seeing through and seeing where you're stamping, etc. You need to take a little bit more extra care of these um, to make sure that they don't lose their stickiness. I'm needing to actually wash these. And you can wash, wash them in warm soapy water um, and the, the stickiness will come back. Now... Um, yeah, so that's the types of stamps. Right, so what else? I want to talk to you about some equipment. Now, you saw the die cutting machine there, which is used for embossing and die cutting. You've seen the heat, heat, um, heat gun tool. Uh, what else do we have? We have... Um, what is known as a paper trimmer. So I'll show you mine. This one isn't available with Stampin' Up! anymore, but there's plenty out there in the craft stores um, and Stampin' Up! will be bringing one of these out soon. So we've got the trimmer where you've got, um, we're lucky we've got a cutting blade and a scoring tool on there. Um, so these are really, really good. Um, you've got your inches uh, and your metric kind of um, measurements there to keep you going. We have a lovely little storage section underneath too. So that's one of the basic things that needs a trimmer. Um, heat guns, um, glue guns, um, hot glue guns, um, they aren't necessary, but oops, once you get into card making, you're definitely going to want to buy them. Um, there's another tool that we have that we use, um, and that is called a trimmer, a scoring board. Now, I don't know where mine is, but basically you saw the um, trimming section. Um, oh, I don't know what I've done with my my scoring board. <laughs> oh, that's not very good. Anyway, a scoring board is a big bit of plastic. Um, you get a scoring tool with that and it has various lines running down it with measurements and you could score it with your scoring tool. Um, I use the built-in one on my trimmer for the moment. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm not sure where I've put it actually. So, they're very useful though if you're doing 3D projects. Oh, I found it, I found it, I found it. Do apologise, I found it. So, this is the um, Stampin' Up! trimmer board. And we get a built-in scoring tool. Now you will see that 
both ends are different sizes. So you need to be careful because the smaller edge may go through some of your cardstock if you push too hard. Now a tip to use these isn't to hold it and go like this, but basically hold it at an angle, kind of like that, and just drag it down. And you could go over it twice if need be, but if you go over it too hard and rip your paper, um, there's no going back from that. So this is good, this has got the inches along there as well, and we get um, little guides that are come in this special little holder unit there. So that is a scoreboard, and this is a scoring tool. Okay, so, next piece of equipment that I love has got to be punches. Now, these punches are absolutely fantastic. I just love all of the Stampin' Up! punches. And these are great for people that don't have a die-cutting machine or people that want to save some time. Um, I use it a lot. And it's quick, easy, super simple to cut out specific images. And Stampin' Up! have a lot of stamp um, punches that coordinate with each other, go up in increments, etc. There really, really is a lot. Um, for example, this Happy Tales set, we have a coordinating punch that goes with that, and that is the dog punch. We also have a cat set, um, but I'm not a cat fan, I'm afraid, so I have this. Isn't it gorgeous? Lovely, jovely. So that is punches, and a lot of these coordinate with our um, stamp sets. Another good reason that um, stamping up products are one of the best out there on the market in my eyes um right so what else have we got now we talked about two stage stamping now if you're not confident using blocks there is a tool a stamping platform and this is basically for precision stamping now um you can have two parts stamping because we have two um, plates on there. So that's really, really good. So I'll quickly show you how you use this. We've got magnets that you need to keep apart because um, they're very strong. What you do is you would put your outline image on, okay? Like so. Um, let me get some ink. I'll use the blue again just for the purpose of this tutorial. You simply ink up your stamp. Okay. Ta da! If you wanted a darker image, you could do that twice. Okay. I need to wash that. Right. So. That's the first part done. And then for the second part, you can move around till you're confident in its placement. Okay, I think that's on top. So once you're happy, pick it up like so. Okay, and add some ink. Let's have some balmy blue on this one. And this is really good. Oh, oh. It unstuck. Let me do that again. That was a bad stamp set to use because I need to clean it. Basically, there you go. Now I want that darker, so let me show you that again. Ta da! And it is stamped perfectly in the lines of your image. So, that is what the Stamparatus is good for. It's also good for if you're making bulk bulk cards and by bulk cards I mean when people make cards for charity uh, you want to make 10 of the same card and put it in the same position this is fantastic for that so that's the apparatus. lots of equipment available but I wouldn't worry about things like this when you're just starting out um, you need to find out if you're going to enjoy card making first okay um, another tool we have that's available um, is our stamping scrub. Now, I haven't seen any other pieces of equipment like this, maybe because I haven't researched it. But basically, this is um, to clean your stamps. 
So there's a wet side and then you dry it off on the dry side. And this is amazing. It saves you having to use cloths, doing this, getting it all over your hands. Um, and what I like to do is I like to use my um, spritz bottles filled with water and I just top it up with wetness if I find it's getting a bit dry. These plates are also removable. Um, I've washed mine a few times now just to rinse any build up of ink off of there and they dry really well and they're really thick so that you're not damaging them by putting them in soapy water etc. So that's a good piece of equipment as well. How are we for time? Half an hour. I think that's not bad. Not bad. So we spoke about the heat gun and you'll need this for wet embossing. Last week we spoke about adhesives um, and another type of glue is hot glue and this is a little hot glue gun and all you do is um, plug it in and it melts the glue. These are really good if you're adding 3D flowers to your cards or projects. Um, let me show you an example. I have my little business card holder here and I'll show you what I mean. So I have a little business card holder here and you can see I have some 3D flowers, paper flowers on there as well as some uh, um, other embellishments um, and I stuck these on with wet glue and because of that they've stayed stuck. So it gives you extra security especially with 3D projects so that's what I use my um, glue gun for it, although I haven't used it in a little while. Um, another thing that you might want to learn about as your supplies grow is storage. And this is um, this is an example of some storage. These are full width cases and you'll see I have various titles on mine. So they're very good. We also have stamp and storage available at the minute. Um, there's MDF, build your own um, storage flat pack kits out there too. Um, I've got one of them for my punches. Um, I bought them off a, a lovely lady um, that I met on stage. Um, so yeah, storage is really important. Especially when you want to protect your paper, protect your equipment and stuff. Um, my all-time goal is to have an IKEA craft room, um, but unfortunately, I've got kids to spend money on, <laughs> which is more important in my eyes. I manage with what I've got, but if you can afford it, go all out because it's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So that is basically um, most of the equipment. Um, I'll show you my basic tool kit. Okay, so I have a little storage box called, called Tools. So I have my snips in here. I have my pokey tool. And this is good for pierce, paper piercing or for removing little bits of paper that's got stuck when you've done some die cutting, etc. Um, we have Take Your Pick tool. Now this is an awesome tool because it has a putty end where you can lift up um, embellishments, etc. with the putty that's in there. Okay, there's also double-ended tool here. There's pokey tool built in there, spatula. And I like to use the pokey tool to pick up my gems. Um, we also have a built-in double-ended scoring tool. Um, now, I had already bought... Um, these things singular before they brought this out. So that's why I've got kind of double. We've got a bone folder that I touched on last week where you score your paper. Um, I have some tweezers here, a little clip. Sometimes if you're sticking something down, it needs a little bit more support. You just clip it on there for a wee bit. And I have a little blending brush. That's a technique that I haven't um, spoken about today. Uh, blend in with your stamp pads, but I will link one of my videos below where I use that technique for you to see it. That was just out the pound shop. 
amazing. Um, we don't have any blending brushes in this Stampin' Up! catalogue. We do have the finger sponges that goes on the end of your finger. Um, but I don't know where mine's are. So, that is all, pretty much, um, in terms of equipment and stuff. There was just some terminology that um, I thought you might want to know about. Um, I'm not up to scratch 100% in terminology of card making myself. Um, but there is... Let me see now. One terminology is um, love it, chop it. And that is where you have a DSP that you love that much. All you do is you chop it up, you add it to a card, like I've done here, and that is the main focus of the card. You know, it's really, really good. Um, you can get a lot of cards out of one piece of 2x2 of cardstock or a few cards out of a 6x6 six six piece. So that's what it is. Love it, chop it. Chop it all down. It's ready to go into your cards. Um, nice and easy. Uh, what else is there? There's CAS, which is CAS, um, which stands for Clean and Simple. Some people um, refer to it as Copy and Share. Um, I think that's the more popular one. An example of a, um, a Clean and Simple card is something like this. Very little on the card, but still quite striking. So I like to call a card like that, cast, clean and simple. Um, now, there's the word cased, which is copy and share everything. Um, where you see a card that you like. Um, if you have seen it on Pinterest, etc. Um, you want to kind of copy it. It's only polite and um, respectful and um, the right thing to do is to link it back to that original artist. Um, many people, most of us watermark our images so it protects our designs um, but the, the printed images are actually copyright um, stamping up or that um, designer that made the stamp so you need to watch if you're selling cards and things. Um, let me see now. So. Once you're starting to make all your cards, you're probably going to think, how do I store them? I'll show you how I store mine. Mine's are in a little basket, and all these cards um, are in what we call little card storage wallets. And you can get packs of 100 of these off the of, of internet or anywhere really, really cheap. Um, and they just protect your cards from further damage, you know. Um, from damage, not further damage. Um, so you might have an old shoe box you can put them in, you might have a special box, special plastic box, but that's how I store my cards and it keeps them safe till I send them out to friends and whatnot. Um, and I think that's all I'm going to speak about this week because that's quite a lot. Um, it's quite a lot and um, I think I've covered most of the basics. There are some advanced paper crafting styles that are out there. Um, that people, once they start card making, they go down a different line and that could be mixed media um, where you use different textures on a card or, or on an artist plate and add embellishments and things. There's quilling where you fold up paper, well, you wind paper up really, really tiny to make other images. That's quite a good one. There's scrapbooking, um, journal making. You can make 3D box projects, uh, floral frames, etc. So once you're starting and once you're confident that the, um, the possibilities are endless and you just need to find uh, your forte and what you like, uh, for me, my forte was buy everything and all things crafty out the local stores. And then when it was coming to actual crafting and putting things together, I really struggled to make things coordinate. Um, so luckily, last October, um, I found stamping up. And I've never looked back since. Never looked back. So easy. Everything matches. Um, you know the script. You know how good they are, right? Um, yeah, so that is it for today. Um, I hope you're enjoying it so far. I hope I'm not boring you too much. And let me see now. What ne next week we are going to look at how to make your hand your handmade cards look professional. 
Okay, so um, we'll go through a couple of card designs and stuff like that. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for um, tuning in. Um, thank you, thank you, if you're going to follow this all the seven episodes. Take care now and uh, happy crafting.